The fire of God is a person. That person is the Holy Spirit. The fire of God is that grace to resist sin. The fire of God is passion and zeal for His name and truth. The fire of God is righteous living. The fire of God is that hunger to see the supernatural. The fire of God is what drives you forward, causing you to know that you've not seen it all. The fire of God is what reminds you that you've not seen the limitation of His power, nor will you ever. The fire of God is what takes place when I don't feel like serving Him. The fire of God is what keeps me going when I feel, it, feel like I've given all that I have. The fire of God is yours. When I talk about the fire, when I talk about revival, I'm not just using Pentecostal lingo. I'm not using charismatic terms. When I talk about the fire of God, I'm talking about zeal for His name that comes by the person of the Holy Spirit who is that fire. He's that fire that burns in you. Did not Jeremiah write, I, I want to keep silent, but it's like fire in my bones. Who do you think that fire was? It was the Holy Spirit who stirred him so that he couldn't contain what God was doing in him. That's the thing about the Spirit filled. You can't contain us. Fire spreads, fire burns, fire consumes, fire cleanses. So when I talk about living in that fire, I'm talking about living in the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about living in that personal revival. Every single one of us will face trials and temptations. Every single one of us will face things in life that cause us to become discouraged. But though we will have tribulation, though we will have trials, though you will be tempted, you must remember to keep the fire burning. When you experience the heartache of loss and you don't understand what's happening, when your emotions are overwhelming you and confusion is clouding your judgment, when the stirrings of the mind make it difficult to hear the voice of God, when your theology is being turned upside down through study, on the days that you don't feel like worshiping, in the times that you feel like you have no purpose, in those moments where you don't even know if you're accepted, feel what you're gonna feel. Go through what you're going to go through, but keep the fire burning. My friend, fire of God is that light that guides. I'm talking about the influence of the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about surrender to who He is. I'm talking about yielding to the patterns that He's called you to walk. Holy Spirit is that fire burning in us. And if we are not careful, we can neglect that influence. The scripture says, quench not the Spirit. Brother David, are you saying we can lose the Holy Spirit? Another sermon, another time? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that same verse that tells us to quench not the Holy Spirit uses a word that is also used in Ephesians chapter 6, where the Bible talks about quenching the fiery darts of the enemy. Fire is what is quenched. Are you saying that you can cause the Holy Spirit to stop burning? No. What the scripture is explaining to us there is the simple fact that we can stifle his influence by the way we live, by the way we think. People, God has given you the victory. It may not always feel that way. God has given you the power to overcome. It may not always look that way. But if you're judging your entire life by what's happening around you, instead of living according to that influence of the Holy Spirit within you, then you'll always be defeated. And those who do not count the cost, such as one who builds a tower without knowing how much it's gonna to cost to finish it, those who do not count the cost often become discouraged when they think it's going to be easy. But if you're going to do this and you wanna keep that fire burning, you have to commit your mind to follow him. If your fire is dwindling, ask yourself, from where am I getting my strength? If you feel your fire is dying, what are you giving him to burn? You feel your fire is dying, what are you giving him to burn? A fire is only alive as long as it has something to consume. When the Lord sent fire from heaven on the altar, the Levites were instructed to keep the fire burning. He didn't say to start it. He said, you keep it burning. And as long as they were putting something on the altar, that fire continued to burn. The problem came when it stopped burning, 
They needed God to send fire again. Nadab and Abihu burned strange fire. They, they burned man-made fire, fire that they had produced. That's why they were consumed. I want to challenge you to begin to put something on the altar. Put Netflix on the altar. Put Instagram on the altar. Put that relationship that you know you're not supposed to be in on the altar. Put that pursuit of wealth that's distracting you from what God called you on the altar. Put it on the altar. Turn to somebody next to you say, put it on the altar. In the comments section, I want you to write it. Put it on the altar. Take that unforgiveness, put it on the altar. Take that pride, put it on the altar. Take that addiction, put it on the altar. Selfish ways, put it on the altar. The need to be right, put it on the altar. The need to be celebrated by the world, put it on the altar. The fire's not burning. Give it something to consume. Do something radical. I dare you. Do, do something wild. Step out of the boat, Peter. Get on that water. Start walking by faith. Begin to do things that make people raise their eyebrows. Begin to do things that make people mock you. Begin to do things that make people wonder if you're a little bit crazy. Build the ark, Noah. Say it when no one will believe it. Speak it when no one else will repeat it. Declare what God tells you to say and don't apologize for it. Give him something to burn. Put it on the altar. You put it on the altar, you watch that fire come roaring back. You begin to sacrifice. You begin to give up. You begin to say no to the flesh and yes to the Holy Spirit. You begin to say no to the sinful habits and yes to the Word of God. You begin to say no to the secret sin and yes to secret prayer. And you watch how God turns it around. Put it on the altar.